Uh, so I've got three questions. I have to read them to remember them. Fear of losing a relationship in the context of enlightenment. Um, sexuality and being intimate uh, and being in the enlight and being and being in the uh, a non-identified state and a, and enlightenment in a relationship. Okay, so I'm going to try and talk on all of these. Well, if one is going into very advanced states, and um, and now the opportunity arises to have uh, sex with the partner, a lot of these things are resolved. Uh, are resolved. Um, you see, it depends on the student and to what extent they're being called to uh, to put being in the infinite beyond absolutely everything at any point, no matter what. And is there a right and wrong? Well, it depends on where the student's at um, in their spiritual evolution as to what the right answer is. But in, in general, uh, at a certain point um, uh, that occurs in someone who's seeking enlightenment comes an intense passion to burn off everything that's left uh, and not let anything come uh uh before uh, uh finishing off the job for enlightenment shall we say there comes a critical stage and at that stage it's there is a willingness to put every to let everything go and not and not identify no matter what and whatever happens seemingly happens in the world um uh, doesn't matter and, and it's appropriate and that that is the testing that occurs at that stage um now being trying to be a responsible spiritual teacher, there is a there is a caveat to that, um, and uh, I have to just say the caveat. The caveat is, at a certain stage, it's not the right thing to do, because um, what if a person has children under the age of um, who are not yet, uh, I don't know, young kids that one is responsible for looking after? Uh, what if uh, one has a wife? Uh, that is that needs the companionship of a identified husband. Uh, so uh, some of the things that can occur is that one blisses out for months and is unable to function or leave the job or may even leave the body uh, as as the light increases and and uh, identification with the body ceases. So um, so it may intuitively it seems it's inappropriate. To go the full hog uh you know that no um i can't go gung-ho because i've got a five-year-old i need to feed or it just seems inappropriate because if i bliss off you know um uh, it seems inappropriate because the wife uh the wife may um uh it may create too much trauma for the wife now of course if um if one is seeking enlightenment and there's no sort of underage kids that one is looking after and there's no wife i mean a job i mean there is no i mean i would say there is in general i think if you just give notice to a job they don't they don't mind if you leave they just hire somebody else uh, i don't think they're going to be too worried so then it's like um then yeah if you seek enlightenment then let nothing come before that and you just uh, don't identify with anything until the job's finished and that's it uh, so that should be quite straightforward, unless unless you want to stay identified. If you, I mean, that's free choice. Everyone has free choice. If you want to keep identifying with your ego forever, then carry on identifying. Uh, but if you seek enlightenment, um, and I think if there's no if there's nothing that's really holding you on to this world, and I'd say it may be appropriate not to seek full enlightenment if you've got underage kids, or um, if um, or something along those lines where you have bonds where it may create a lot of damage um you know so uh, you don't want like a five-year-old saying like my dad blissed out and i didn't have a dad <laughs> that's not funny but there you go so all right so i'll stop it on oh sorry what's the so fear of loss of well again fear of loss i mean again the same things if one's in a relationship i mean if the wife doesn't mind you blissing out and uh, or whatever, uh, or is happy for you to do that, then I see no problem. Uh, if the wife says, "Look, you create a lot of pain for me, uh, and uh, and I probably can't function without you," 
then I'd probably pray and meditate and speak to a guide or a sponsor or a mentor or a spiritual teacher or a therapist uh, and talk it out and get some extra help before you go. Uh, because um, now I think with Hawkins, what happened is he went into such a profound experience that he wasn't able to, unable to function or talk. He left his marriage uh, and walked off in and went off into the desert to be on his own. But that was like taken out of his hands. There was no choice there. He just blissed, suddenly blissed out and unable to function, unable to go back to the work you were in. And the wife didn't understand what was going on. And, and, and the right thing to do was to leave because the state was just too powerful to function in the world. So that wasn't actually a choice. It was like taken out um, of, of choosing, I'd say, from the level of the ego. But if you're asking this question, you're still in your ego and you still think you can make a choice. Uh, so that's the thing with fear of relationship sexuality. Well, the sexuality thing is like, you know, it, uh, it again, it's some of the context about are you uh, hurting the other person's feelings? But otherwise, um, you know, it, it will be uh, one option would be to just keep in presence no matter what and not let, you know, the orgasm, not let the uh, compliments pull you out of presence. You know, you're not going into your ego thinking, oh, I need to look after their feelings. Or as, as the orgasm emerges, you're not going into your ego trying to identify with, with it as a separate event. You're staying in the infinite presence. So in that way, you start transcending. So sex can happen, uh, uh, relate, uh, seemingly relationship happens because you're not there. So it's not really a, your ego that's relating. Uh, so you transcend what's left of your ego in the experience of sex. So that would be if the orientation is for enlightenment. Or if that seems inappropriate, you identify with your thoughts and your body and you think about your partner and making them happy from the level of your ego. And you enjoy the orgasm from the level of the ego and you stay at that level, you know, which is a choice as well. So that's how it depends on on, on the context of the situation as to um, enlightenment in a relationship. Well, you see, when you seek enlightenment, well, here's, what about enlightenment in a relationship? If you, what if you're single and you're asking me, uh, what about enlightenment? Well, again, I would say if you're single, that's really, really lucky because uh, I would go for enlightenment first and then you get the people who are attracted to you at the state of enlightenment. Problem is, if you, if you seek enlightenment and you just meet someone at the local pub uh, and you say, I'm interested in enlightenment, is that you, you change very rapidly. So what, you know, on that day that you meet them, you're at a very low level of consciousness. And the, and if you're a woman, the guy seems really nice. He's drinking a few pints. Uh, he makes funny jokes. And you're attracted to that at that level. But you're, you're now dedicated to enlightenment and advancing and transcending and increasing your vibration very rapidly. And he's, he's attracted to you. You're attracted to them. And you go, oh, well, let, let's, let's get married. Now, if you, uh, or let's have a long-term relation or have some kids. Now, the thing is, because you're changing so rapidly, uh, I have a lot of experience in helping people, suddenly what you like uh, starts to, uh, and what you will put up with and won't, is changing very, very rapidly as you're spiritually evolving. And he just likes the, 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 uh, the you that he met on the first day. And he doesn't want to evolve or change, and he wants the you that you were. So in my experience, it I mean, often, I don't like saying this, but often it leads to a breakup yeah, or, or either you go back to where you were or uh, or you, you get made a choice. It's like, you know, and there, there usually is friction. Um, so um, that's just my experience. So um, maybe it won't, it's not in all cases. I can't say in all cases, but generally, if one person is doing a lot of heavy spiritual work and the other person isn't, at a certain point, it becomes difficult. That's just my experience um, of uh, helping people in relationships where one is committed to very advanced spiritual work on an ongoing level and the other person isn't. It eventually leads to um, tensions. Um, okay, so I'll stop on that one.